Hello and welcome back to Gapy's Garden. It's time for our July pepper update. Now we've got most of our peppers starting to set pods now. There are a few stragglers. Let's take a walk around the garden and I'll show you how all of the peppers are progressing. We're going to start with the peppers here on the left side of the greenhouse. This is where the three bacatums are. The first one here is a sugar rush variety. I've grown the peach and the stripe before, but this one is the red, so I thought I'd give it a try. We've got a few pods set here. A couple of them are pretty good sized, so we've got that one there. And then I just noticed we've got another pretty good sized pod back here. Now, if you're not familiar with sugar rush, they tend to take forever to ripen. So I'm not expecting these to ripen anytime soon, even though they are pretty good sized. So we'll have to see how long those take. Now we've also got one here that is called Criolla Sella. And I've heard that this variety doesn't really need staking, which is not typical of a bacatum. Usually bacatums get really tall and leggy and need staking. But this one is growing more wide than it is tall. So it's really pretty short. I did end up using one of these Y stakes on it because the branches were just getting so long and they were starting to touch the ground. Um, and they've got quite a few pepper pods set here. Got one there and they're just pretty much looks like it's going to be a very productive pepper. We haven't seen anything ripen yet, but I don't think they get too much bigger than this but we've got a lot of pods on here so we're gonna have a lot of those and then the last one over here is called the ahi guyana now this one if you saw my last pepper update the leaves were looking pretty bad and actually they're not looking too much better but it is still setting pods so it doesn't seem to be affecting the the pod production we've got a pretty nice one there I'm not sure how big these get. I don't think it would be too much bigger than that. I think that's our biggest pod, but we've got a few more that are in here. And we've got lots of flowers. And this one is getting pretty tall, which is typical of the bacatums. On the right side of the greenhouse, we've got our annuums. And we've got a couple of chinents in the back. So I'm just going to start there. So the two chinents varieties we have is this bubble gum and it's a sweet bubble gum so it's not as hot as your typical bubble gum but it still has a lot of heat to it but we've got a few pods on here and I did have a few other pods but something was eating them so I ended up picking those off but so far we've got a few in here that don't seem to be getting eaten and they do look like they are going to have the bleeding calyx so the bubble gum varieties um, the calyx here, this top green part that's attached to the stem, will turn the same color as the pod. And that's what gives it the name bubblegum. And then behind that, we've got Benny Highland, which is another chinense variety. Unfortunately, I don't think this one has any pod set. Well, it looks like that one. We've got a teeny tiny one there that looks like it's trying to set a pod. That might be the only one, but we do have quite a few flowers in there. This one here is a Gabby Hot Wax, and it is getting fairly tall, and it's got some pretty decent sized pods. I'm thinking I may need to stake this one, but we'll have to wait and see. The pods do get fairly large. Let's see if we can find some. There's a good sized one down here. Got that one there. We've got another one over here, and we've got quite a few running up along this, this stem here. Back here we have Criolla de Cochina, and this is another one that is getting pretty tall. There are a few pods that are set on here. They are kind of a little bit bell-shaped. We've got that one there. It has some ridges to it. And then we've got another one over on this side right there. And I think those are the only two pods that I've seen on this one. This Fushimi is a Japanese pepper, and it is probably the either this, maybe the second largest pepper that I have in the greenhouse, and it is probably the most productive, I think. I've already harvested one pot off of it. I've seen people harvest them when they're green and also when they're red. I went ahead and harvested one that was green, but we are pretty loaded with pods on this one. They're just all over the place. I don't think they get too much bigger than that guy there, so we should see some 
starting to ripen to red. I wasn't really a huge fan of the flavor of the green pods, so hopefully the red ones taste a little bit better. Back here is Chloe's Sweet Tangerine, and it was my favorite sweet pepper that I grew last year, so I decided to grow it again. This one came from Timothy Moultrip, and it has got quite a few pods starting to set here at the very bottom. We've got maybe four in there, and we've got some flowers starting to form on the top canopy here. So we are hoping to get some pretty good production out of that guy. This one here is the mini chocolate. So these are small kind of bell-shaped pods that should turn brown when they're ripe. Uh, this is the one that I'm also growing in my pepper in a can. Nothing ripe on this one either. Now this one back here is an interesting cross between a bell pepper and a mushroom pepper. So these are the pods. I think this is the F3, if I'm not mistaken, that I got from my mom. So these, I think, aren't going to get too much bigger than that. But since this is a pretty young cross, who knows how big they're going to get. But we've got quite a few pods on there already. This one here is a orange lessia. Now typically the lessia variety is red, but I happen to get my hands on an orange variation of it. And we've got quite a few pods set on there. This is a really sweet pepper and I haven't grown any lessias before. So I'm really excited to see how this one tastes, but we've probably got five or six pods that are set on there and hopefully should be ripening soon. Now this one back here is Aconcagua. I also grew this one last year and it was a, another favorite of mine, so decided to grow that one again too. I do have a cage around this one. This one typically gets very large and the peppers also get very large, so it really does need staking. And we've got this pod here. I mean, you'd think this is pretty large, but it's gonna get actually probably another inch or two longer than that if it's the same size as the ones that I got last year. But this is a very, very productive plant for peppers that are so large and delicious. Now here we've got a Peter pepper, and this is one that is lagging a little bit behind. There are no pods set on this one as far as I can tell. There are quite a few flowers, but they're just not setting any pods yet. We've got another tall one back here. This one is called Antohi Romanian, and I don't believe we have any pods set on this one yet either, although it looks like there might be one way in the back here that might be trying to set a pod right there. So maybe we'll get one here pretty soon. Um, I don't know too much about this one. I haven't grown it before, but I have heard good things about it. This one here is Shishito and is a very, very popular uh, pepper that I've grown a few times before. It's very productive, really good for stir fries and grilling. Um, it's really a, good for a lot of things, but people pick them both when they're green and when they're red. I haven't harvested any yet, but the next time we have a pizza, I think I'm gonna harvest some to put on a pizza. But this is a very, very productive plant and definitely will grow that one again. This one here is a tequila sunrise. It looks like the pods on this one actually form upright so you can see the the pods are pointed up but we've got quite a few pods set on there it doesn't look like it's going to require staking just yet but i'm keeping an eye on it because it is getting fairly tall and is pretty loaded with pods now the last pepper in the greenhouse does have a cage around it it's the korean gochu probably my favorite pepper that i grow except i have not grown this particular variety so there's a lot of different korean gochus and this one is called the Hong Gochu, and it looks like it is getting some pretty large pods. So these might be the largest Gochus that I've ever grown. So I'm interested to see how those do, but I don't have any ripe yet, but I don't think they're gonna get too much bigger, so we should see some ripe soon. Now outside the greenhouse, we have 10 peppers here in a raised bed, and they really have not been doing all that great. Some of them are setting pods, some of them aren't, but I think one of the reasons they're not happy over here is because right next to them, I have the tomatillos. This is to the west side, so they block pretty much all the sun in the afternoons. So they're not getting much sun in the afternoon, but they get some in the morning. So I think that is probably not helping very much. But this first one here is the Craig's Grande. 
jalapeno and we don't have any pods set on that one. I was trying to grow a lot of jalapenos this year because I wanted to do some pickling and make cowboy candy which is a sugared jalapeno but I don't know if I'll have as many as I was hoping for. Um, next to that is the pasilla. I think I've got two of those but this one we are starting to see some pods on this one so this one isn't doing too badly. We've got this one here and then the one next to it is also a pasilla and we've got a couple pods set on that one as well. The last one in this row is the guajillo and we do have a couple of pods set on this one or maybe just oh, here's another one here not very big so this one is going a little bit slow but it, we at least have a few pods there and then the four that I have in this row are all early jalapenos so this first one the largest one is one that I grew from seed this year and then I picked up those last three from a local friend that had a bunch of early jalapeno peppers that I decided to get from her but we aren't I'm not seeing any pod set actually on any of these jalapenos so hopefully they start setting pods here pretty soon because I want some jalapenos and the two that we have over in this row these are chili de arbols so I haven't grown these before but the peppers on these don't get very big um, this one here doesn't look like it has any pod set yet for some reason but the one next to it let's walk over here it is just loaded with pods you can see all these pods it's even got looks like this one is actually ripe so I've been waiting for this one to ripen it wasn't quite ripe yesterday so this is actually the first pepper I'm harvesting of this year so there it is I get to share it with you but we've got tons and tons of pods on this one it is much shorter than the other chili de arbol um, and it actually had this pod set when I planted it normally I try to remove all flowers and peppers from plants until after I transplant it but this one I decided to just leave one pepper on and I don't know it seems to have bushed out quite quite well over here in the shade in between my fig tree and some leeks I've got the ricotto peppers so I've got two of those these are chocolate or brown ricottos and we do have a few pod sets so there's one there and I think there's another one another one there they haven't started turning brown yet they do have some kind of purpling but I think that is from the sun and not actual ripening uh, we also have a few pods set over here little tiny one there and I think so these are actually branching out quite a bit and not growing upright I may end up having to find a another one of those small Y stakes to put on them to keep them off the ground but they seem to be doing okay now the last ones I have outside in the garden are these two in containers and these are my own cross that was an ac accidental cross actually um, many of you are familiar with this this was the sugar rush striped crossed with the Susan Garza's ahi tangerine um, this one is the yellow variation this is an f3 I believe seeds so these hopefully will turn yellow with striped with kind of an orangish red uh, but we have a few different pod shapes on here the ones on this plant are a little bit fatter than my other plant over here which is the orange variation so this one has a little bit longer pods on it than the yellow one and I think I actually prefer the the more fat pods but we'll have to see um, in a taste test to see which one tastes better these ones also probably will take a long time to ripen so we'll have to wait and see since it's got the sugar rush genes which take forever this is probably going to take forever as well there's one more set of peppers I'm going to show you and they are in the house all right here in the house we've got our peppers in a can so I don't have these outside because I think it's a little too hot out there and they'd probably just get fried pretty easily since they are in such a small container they dry out really fast I do water these every day now in my last pepper update I think I showed you the result of some neglect and 
Uh, surprisingly, they've all recovered quite well. Even this one here that lost all of its leaves, I actually cut it down all the way down to there and it had no leaves at all. But now it's starting to grow back and it even has a few flower buds here. It's not looking the best. It's kind of shaped a little bit funny. I probably need to rotate it a little bit more so that it gets more sunlight on the backside. But it does look kind of funny, I think. And then, oh, this is the marbles pepper there. And then this one here is the Count Dracula. So this is the only pep purple leafed pepper that I'm growing this year. It's got a few flowers that it just started putting out. It doesn't have any pods set yet, but the flowers are looking really nice. And then the last one we have is the mini chocolate. So this is the one I showed you in the greenhouse. And this one is doing really well. It's growing really long. I might end up trimming some of these branches back uh, because they're starting to get a little wonky. But I do have a metal post in here just to try and keep it upright because it was looking kind of floppy because the stem was a little bit weak after the the drought that it had but it is recovering well i just think it's getting a little taller than i want it to so i probably will cut it back a little bit here pretty soon and i don't see any peppers on there but it is pretty loaded with flowers so it probably will set some here pretty soon so that's it for the peppers in the garden for July. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.